Welcome back to our final video module of statics. Today I'd like to cover a little bit more on virtual work and um, I'd like to start it off with um, kind of like a, a trick. Let's imagine that instead of a simple work in, work out, we have springs involved. So here I've drawn a pivoting uh, linkage that's combined to a roller and that roller is going to want to move depending on how much force is applied. And what it's pushing against is a spring. Now fortunately, um, springs can give us, can throw us for a loop at first because we're not sure how the force changes as X changes. What do we do with that? Well, we know a couple of useful facts. What we've been looking at is work. The work in equals the work out. However, work and energy, they're, they're, they're pretty much the same, just a different way of seeing the same thing. The energy, the potential energy in a spring is one half kx squared. Now we can see that the energy that is put into this, the work that's put into this whole assembly is going to go into the form of the potential energy of the spring. Moreover, the potential energy of the spring is related to this distance, x squared, which means finding out the distance that this, maybe the distance this uh, pivot goes down, is a pretty straightforward concept. But what we need to realize is that in this case, the work in is our force times this distance, and the work out is going to be the stored energy, the potential energy. You can imagine the same type of concept might work if uh, you have to push a block. Let's say you have a complex assembly and the end linkage takes a block and we'll assume that it's not, that there's no friction and it pushes it up a hill. Well, if it pushes it up a hill, it started off with a little bit of potential energy. And then based on this distance right here, this distance right here, this H, it gave it more potential energy. So the rub that I want to tell you on this one is that we're not always working with a force in and a force out. In some cases it may be different energy. It may be spring energy like right here. It may be here uh, potential energy in this case is MGH. It may be potential energy due to the height of something. It might be kinetic energy, it might be thermal energy, it could be all sorts of things. But I, in the end of the day, the only thing you need to really pay attention to is that the work in or the energy in equals the energy out or the work out. The second thing I'd like to uh, briefly cover is in our previous video, I believe I said that the thing you want to do in the second step is with the geometry, get a relationship between Y and X. Generally, you can't get a relationship with between Y and X right away. Many times you have to wait till this step to get that relationship between y and x. You can do it either way, um, but generally it ends up being in the derivative side, which is what we did here. We get a relationship between I, y and x. Let's finish this session up with a couple equations of energy that might help you out as you confront different problems. Um, let's see, energy, um, energy kinetic, one half, mv squared, or uh, the potential energy is not only one half kx squared, it's also um, one half f1 plus f2 times times x, assuming that you know you're starting at zero and moving uh, the, the force at the beginning and the force at the end, add them together, multiply the x, that's going to be your potential energy there. Um, what's another one? Another potential energy is um, you take the moment times the theta subtended. Generally, if, if weird things start happening, it you'll see it this way, but um, the moment times theta subtended. Let's see, and finally, uh, let's say rotational kinetic energy. Rotational kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. Thank you very much and congratulations on finishing these modules on statics. I trust that now you probably have a pretty good intuitive idea 
of the fundamentals of statics and you can use them to do some remarkable things. Thank you very much. Goodbye.